Was Princess Diana's collection of designer clutches about more than just fashion? Everyone knows that Lady Di's wardrobe and outfits contributed significantly to the history of fashion and culture. Who would disagree that this woman had style? But what about her accessories? The People's Princess was known for her massive collection of handheld bags, purses, and clutches. What the public might not know is that Diana's purses were for more than holding her royal compact. After she married Prince Charles, joining the royal family at age 20, Lady Diana became Diana, Princess of Wales. Along with her new title came a few perks, one of which was the royal closet. Many of us dream about marrying a prince, mainly for one reason, or three, the fashion, the jewelry, and the accessories. As a princess, Diana had her pick of any of Europe's top designers, and not to mention access to the royal jewels. The new princess quickly grew her collection of pieces by Catherine Walker, David and Elizabeth Emmanuel, Belleville Sassoon, Victor Edelstein, and Christina Stambolian. From her enchanting high fashion wedding dress in 1981 to the famous revenge dress in 1994, Diana always knew how to use fashion to her advantage, turning a few heads along the way. Besides her wardrobe of fashionable evening wear, Diana also became known for her massive collection of designer clutches. The bags often went unnoticed at the time. Now, looking back at Diana's impressive wardrobe, many fans from newer generations are noticing that for every dress, jacket, suit, or hat, Princess Di had a matching, elegant clutch bag to complete her outfit. Much like with her wardrobe of gowns, Diana was a fan of supporting local British designers for her beloved bags. One designer, however, who had a huge impact on Diana's place in fashion history was the French designer Christian Dior. Did you know that the iconic Dior lady bag is named after the princess's pre-royal name, Lady Diana? She popularized the black quilted satchel with gold hardware, along with Salvatore Ferragamo's Lady D design, by wearing it to a gala in 1995. When the bag went on sale in 1996, it sold out in minutes. The style of the Dior bag is still popular today, thanks to this classic collab. In season 4 of Netflix's The Crown, actress Emma Corrin, who plays the role of Princess Diana, is often seen carrying a tote or clutch. The show's costume designers worked closely with Diana's real-life wardrobe. Corrin sported some of Diana's repeated looks, a metallic silver clutch, a classic white shoulder bag, and of course, the classic envelope-style clutches that Diana was fond of. During the 80s and 90s, Diana had an impressive collection of bags on rotation. Her bags were created by some of the top designers in Europe and the world. She always coordinated her clutches perfectly with her gowns. The young princess was somewhat of an expert when it came to mixing and styling accessories, thanks in part to her endless collection. Although Diana started her royal career wearing mostly British designers, as was part of the royal protocol at the time, she soon found her way to a humble little fashion house known as Chanel. Diana became a fan of the classic black bags. Rumor has it that after her divorce from the prince, she no longer wore Chanel as she saw the double C logo as symbolic of her ex-husband's name paired with that of his new girlfriend, Camilla Parker Bowles. One of Diana's favorite American designers was Lana Marks, who was also a close friend. The designer created the Lana Marks Princess Diana bag. It had to be regal, it had to be fashionable, and it had to be able to transcend time. The bag featured a top handle and a gold front clasp. Diana owned the bag in multiple colors. Actually physically remind them of her. Diana typically went for smaller clutches to complement her evening dresses and gala looks. However, she could be seen at outdoor sporting or horse events with her husband, carrying larger purses and carpet bag-like totes. Makes sense, we're sure a day at the races calls for a few more supplies than a night at the opera. As she left royal life, she was sometimes spotted carrying more oversized totes. The physically attractive divorcee spent a lot of time playing tennis and exercising, making the bigger bags a little more practical for her daily life. One of her favorites was the Todd's de-styling handbag. Ever wonder why Princess Diana, and other royals for that matter, were always seen with a clutch or bag? Aside from being glamorous and fashionable and elegantly pulling together an outfit, Diana's clutches had a double function as her secret paparazzi weapon. It was recently revealed by a designer by the name of Anya Hindmarch that Princess Diana would use her collection of colorful bags to protect herself from the press. Hindmarch is famous for her I'm not a plastic bag tote design that was wildly popular at its release. The designer also mentioned that Diana was a very loyal customer and a lot of fun, and that she would often visit the design studio without a bodyguard. 
Young Diana had the shy, demure princess look down. With her short, feathered hair often falling in her face, Diana maintained a look of youthful innocence that initially impressed her new conservative in-laws. Her early look centered around draping fabrics, cinched waists, and exaggerated collars, all the markings of a queen in training. Diana's double-function bags offered her a small piece of privacy in an otherwise overly scrutinous life. Diana's life was so entangled with the press and paparazzi that the cameras were everywhere she turned, from the moment she caught the eye of a prince to the day she passed away. So not only were Diana's bags perfectly tailored to match her outfits and hide her from the glaring paparazzi flashes, but they also served a third purpose. Since it's well known that the royal family has a rather old-fashioned view of modesty, Diana's wardrobe often reflected that. Diana was usually seen in blazers, full-length dresses, and long sleeves. However, when she did feel like revealing a little shoulder, she had to be creative with covering up in front of the cameras. With paparazzi always in Diana's face for an uninvited close-up, she would often use her bag to give her gowns a little more modesty, doing what she could to reveal less skin to the press cameras and crowds of fans as she stepped out of vehicles. The bags were especially helpful when deeper necklines came into style in the mid-90s. No wardrobe malfunctions for this princess. As Diana earned her place as one of the most beloved royals of all time, she did so not only through her incredible fashion sense, but also with her empathetic personality. Princess Diana became known as the People's Princess, thanks to her ability to connect with people everywhere she went. The public admired her willingness to support causes that were mostly untouched by other celebrities and people in power. The royal family knows how to get the most out of their handbags. It's an unwritten rule that the queen uses her handbags to send secret messages to her staff. Since she's the Queen of England, she can't exactly tell her dinner guests to please leave by nine. She can, however, send a secret signal by casually putting her bag on the dinner table. This means, hey guys, time to go home. If the Queen's ladies-in-waiting see her bag placed on the floor rather than on her lap, that means she wants to be saved from a boring or uncomfortable conversation. Oh, really? Please. The 91-year-old monarch has also been known to spin the ring on her finger or switch her bag from her right shoulder to her left, which also means she wants a meeting to wrap up. We have to admit, it's quite clever. The queen isn't as into European labels as the younger female royals. She prefers the reliable Launer London brand. She has over 200 and likes the Royale and Black Patent Traviata style. Now that the queen's codes are public knowledge, do you think she'll come up with some new and inventive signals to send her staff? The old-fashioned handbag trick has even trickled down the monarchy. It's been reported that Kate Middleton, Duchess of Cambridge, also uses her handbags in a tactical way. While there's no legitimate royal rule about it, the royal family, including Kate and Prince William, tend to avoid shaking hands with the public, even before physical distancing was a thing. To avoid awkwardly ducking shakes left and right, the Duchess holds her clutch bag in front of her with both hands, a subtle yet obvious signal that she'd rather not. Would you use this trick to avoid clumsy handshakes with strangers? While out in public, Kate and William don't hold hands. Why? The family sees their public engagements as part of their job, and holding hands isn't always seen as professional. Plus, we're guessing the royal family isn't much for PDA. With so many eyes on the royal family at all times, and so many public engagements, these little tricks probably really come in handy. Diana's wardrobe was about more than just making a statement in fashion. Her fashion, accessories, and even her hairstyles were able to say what Diana wasn't always allowed to say. When you're as famous as the women of the royal family are, everything you wear and say is about more than just fashion. Diana was known to be an artist at heart. While she wasn't able to perform as a dancer as much as she wanted, she could express her artistic and creative side through her style, to a certain extent. It's fun to think of the princess's style as an evolution that went from the shy young girl who married a prince to the powerful woman who rocked little black dresses and stiletto heels. Was Diana sending signals to the public with her style and bags, much like the queen sends messages to her staff? It was impossible to know at the time what this young woman was going through as she always appeared bright, beautiful, and stylish. During Diana's life, many of her supporters, friends, and family had no idea what she was really going through. Sadly, Princess Diana's life was not always as glamorous as it appeared to be from the outside. 
With more and more stories of Diana's life coming to light, it's possible that the bags weren't just to protect her royal image, but also a symptom of the young princess's own insecurities. Long before the world was open-minded about mental health, Diana opened up, telling viewers of her televised interview about her long-time struggles. You inflicted upon yourself because your self-esteem was to low ebb and you don't think you're worthy or valuable. At the time of the post-marriage interview, Diana was a champion for ending the stigma surrounding mental health. She went through a difficult marriage and began to see negative headlines targeting her reputation. The documentary, Diana, in her own words, highlights some of the trying times in the young mother's life. But really, it would have been far easier to have had two wives. Despite her glamorous life full of designer clothing and immaculate bags, everyone could identify with Diana's story. Even though she didn't become queen, she did become the queen of people's hearts. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts. In later years, her sons William and Harry continued her legacy by advocating for mental health awareness and organizations in the UK. Diana's struggles were only multiplied by the relentless press and paparazzi that plagued her life. Everywhere she went, she was being filmed and photographed, with headlines drawing conclusions about her rocky marriage, her family, and her children. Unfortunately, Diana's battle with the press and negative headlines is not an issue that society left in the 20th century. Contemporary celebrities like Britney Spears and Paris Hilton are now opening up about how the media puts so much pressure on women in the public eye that it can have severe damage on reputations, careers, and lives. I've advocated for so long for women to use their voice, and then I was silent. Meghan Markle's recent interview with Oprah Winfrey is the other bookend to Diana's tragic struggle with royal life. As Meghan Markle and her husband shared, their move away from the monarchy was an attempt to protect themselves and their children from Diana's story repeating itself. My biggest concern was history repeating itself. Harry also added, and when I talk about history repeating itself, I'm talking about my mother. Meghan revealed in her interview that after her first child's birth, she found the pressures of royal life and the media to be overwhelming. She feared for her safety and didn't know who she could turn to in her new family. A story that sounds all too familiar. But I was not aware of how overwhelming that attention would become. We have to ask ourselves now, will we continue to let the media destroy lives or will we hold the press accountable for modern standards of social justice? There's no doubt Diana was a modern fashion icon of her time and her sense of style, along with her heart for humanity, will always have a big place in history. As the 80s and 90s looks cycle back into fashion, younger generations are once again looking to Princess Diana for style inspiration. 2020 saw many of Diana's classic looks resurface through designer collections and magazine photo shoots. Diana's more laid-back, casual style of the late 90s has also seen an enormous hit among recent mainstream styles, namely the off-duty bike shorts, oversized sweaters, and chunky trainers. A look from later in her life, a little black dress by Christina Stambolian, dubbed the Revenge Dress, which she paired with a classic black clutch, became iconic thanks to Diana's newfound confident and boss woman attitude. In the late 90s, as the former princess finally came into her own, her style went up about a hundred notches. And that's saying a lot. Current icons like Hailey Bieber and Rihanna all look to Lady Di for outfit inspo and have recreated some of her iconic looks. Princess Diana's clutch look is still making waves on the runways to this day. Are the days of oversized carry-alls over? 2021 red carpets are now, unsurprisingly, seeing a lot of tiny clutch bags completing stars' outfits. Chanel, Valentino, Fendi, and other major brands are all jumping on the clutch train with collections of hand-sized miniature bags for the new season. Dior debuted their envelope-style clutches for Spring 21, while Alexander McQueen launched an oversized white clutch, very reminiscent of a favorite from Lady Di's iconic collection. Will we see more clutches and tiny bags in this year's upcoming fashion collections? We sure hope so! With so many documentaries and films following Diana's life, there's yet another one on the way. As fans of Diana have probably heard, Kristen Stewart is starring in a new take on Diana's life. The film, surprisingly called Spencer, focuses on a particular weekend in Diana's life when she was making a big, life-altering decision. We can't wait to see the insight into Diana's life from this new movie. Will you be streaming Spencer? Whichever way you choose to see Diana, a dedicated humanitarian, a forward-thinking fashionista, a talented artist, a loving mother, 
One thing is for sure, she had the wardrobe and the accessories to match her powerful personality. Princess Diana seemed to have it all. A handsome prince for a husband, a wardrobe overflowing with designer gowns and bags. But as we now know, there was much more beneath the surface. Diana struggled with constant paparazzi, and often, her clutches were the only thing between her and the blinding flashbulbs. Lady Di's impact on fashion and culture reaches far beyond her famous looks and tells a story of a woman doing her best to face a very challenging life. Do you think Diana's collection of clutches are an important part of history and fashion culture? Let us know what you think in the comments, and subscribe to The Taco for more stories about fashion history's best moments.